Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a video on tonight. Uh, it's gonna be on me uh, uh, Marlin three three six thirty thirty. To be completely honest, not the video I wanted to do. What with work and with weather. Now we're all in lockdown, so God knows when I'm gonna get out and have a shoot. And I haven't posted anything for a while, so I'll cobble together something and I'll I'll, I'll make something out of this. We've 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 shot the thing in. We've uh, we've had a shooting trip. Um, there wasn't a great deal to shoot, unfortunately. Like everything was perfect except the uh, the, uh, the the pink etc. Didn't really play the game, but that's the way it goes. Um, so we'll we'll have a, we'll have a crack and uh, make some sort of a video out of it, and uh, so it should be all right. So let's have a look. Okay, right, everyone, welcome back. And uh, tonight we're going to have a look at um, my new 3030 that I picked up a couple of weeks ago. Now, we'll have a quick look at it before we do all the rhubarb on it. We'll go from the back. Nice big, uh, nice big uh, recoil pad there. This is a Marlin 336, by the way. It's a big loop model. And uh, if we have a really good thing like these, Marlins there made at the end of the Remington era, as they call them, Remlins or whatever. Some of them, the, the fit of all the, the timber up against the uh, the metal is not real good. This one's quite all right, quite all right. I'm, I'm, I can see no dramas with that at all, and everything looks pretty sound. So we'll uh, we'll do all the rhubarb on it first. As I said, it's a uh, Marlin model 336 WBL, which is Winchester Big Loop. Uh, and it's, they call it the green and black edition. Obviously chambered in 3030 Winchester. I picked this one up from Cleavers Firearms at Redcliffe and the bare rifle, none of that rhubarb on it, uh, cost me $1,149. So that's not too bad, that's not too bad. Uh, they've got a six shot capacity tube magazine underneath that is fed by the, the side gate here. I, I prefer the side gates rather than the tube because there's too much, there's too much buggerizing around with that for me. Now they have, uh, they have what they call their micro groove barrel. It's 20 inches or 50 centimetres in length with a 1 in 10 twist. Now this one is the blue finish one. You can get them in, in, in different sort of finishes and here and there, stainless, etc, etc. Um, this one's the matte blue finish. Um, and it's got a hardwood stock and fore end, which gives it a little bit more weight. But it feels actually quite nice in your hand. And that's, uh, that's finished in what they call the drab green with spiderweb detail. That's all that. Fleck, that's that's what done the same way you used to do uh, fleck in fiberglass. So I thought that's that's pretty simple. Nothing flash about that. Now the uh, the overall length from point to point on this one is uh, 980 mil or 38 and a half inches or three foot two and a half. So it's not even a meter long. So there we go. Uh, now the trigger pull from the factory was a bit rugged and a bit inconsistent. I was getting readings between six and seven pound quite often more often than not above six and a half pounds so it was a pretty rugged sort of trigger to start with i've since done that uh change the trigger spring on i did a little video on that the other week and that's got it down to around four pounds sometimes a bit less not brilliant but for the scrub guns that these are fine no dramas at all um now these come fitted with iron sights with the, the hooded front sight and uh, i think they call it a buckhorn sight at the rear now i've removed the, uh, the front side off this, one screw pulls that out, and that's fine, I've kept that there somewhere, and the rear sight just folds down out of the way of the scope. Don't want to get him up, my the scope. Now, I've, um, pardon me, I've fitted a zero MOA um, EGW Picatinny rail, because the receivers of these things from the factory are drilled to accept a pick rail or scope mount, rings mount, whatever, however you want to do it. It's got a zero MOA Picatinny rail on it. I fitted the uh, uh, hammer spur that was included with the rifle. I just fitted that to the hammer there so, it's, it's, so you can operate, operate the hammer with your, your thumb around the scope. And uh, I fitted a set of uh, steel loophole LRW rings, they're medium height, and a Hawk Vantage 
two to seven by 32 scope. And we'll get into that in a little bit later. And the overall weight of this as she sits with no ammo on it, with all the little extra doodads on it, is 3.85 uh, kilos or just on eight pound eight ounces. So it's not too bad. They're a short little scrub gun and it also comes fitted in the, in the stock with a couple little sing, uh, sling swivels um, if you, you want to sling it over your shoulder. And this butt pad um, does take quite a deal of the recoil out of it. Not that the recoil's too bad on these 33s, for, um, which is quite a good thing. So, all right, we'll talk about the, re the, the rhubarb on it. The, the scope, uh, I fitted a red dot to this originally, uh, but my old eyes won't let me see through red dots. So, Scopes are the next best, uh, next best thing. And I'm, I'm quite happy with this Hawk scope. Now I have had this rifle out, uh, I shot it the first time um, with, uh, with the, the terrible trigger pull and I had it, um, uh, I had some home loads and some factory, uh, some factory PPU loads and I was loaded up PPU brass. This rifle does not like PPU brass. It wouldn't, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't eject it. I almost felt like I was going to break this lever trying to get him out. A few I had to knock out with a uh, with a rod. So the PPU brass got moved on. I've since I've since converted over to Winchester brass. Same load, same everything else. Not an issue. Not one single solitary issue. So um, we took it out again, and I'll show you the results of that from the other day. Since I've done the, the uh, trigger, and the difference is. Uh, is quite noticeable so uh, yeah there's not so much so the trigger's not so hard to pull um basically you'll feed the uh feed your ammunition through there standard lever action pretty nice now that's a nice smooth action that's not that's not that's not funky at all and your standard hammer you've got fully cocked half cocked and uncocked and your safety which is your little bar safety, straight across there. There you go, as far as you can go, can't go off. So there we go. Now that trigger pull, as I said, is around the four pound mark, which for a scrub gun like this is quite okay. These things, um, these things you, you, you're, not, you're not shooting out to, you're not shooting out to 200 meters with precision shots. You know, they, these are close quarter scrub guns and, and that's, that's what you use them for. Be honest with what you're gonna do with them and you'll have no issues with them. Now the finish on these things is your, your matte blue. It's, it's quite a nice finish, um, nice low maintenance. Everything good, they, I have had a good look over this. There seems to be no blemishes in the finish on this one. The, uh, the, the fit between uh, the, the timber and all the, um, all, the, uh, all the woodwork is quite, uh, it's quite flush and quite snug, so there's no issues there. There's no uh, issues or blemishes on the woodwork. So this is uh, what they call the remlins. This is uh, quite a good, uh, quite a good example of it. So I'm, uh, I'm more than happy with that. So we'll, uh, we'll cut this and we're gonna have a look at some shooting results. Right, this is how the, the rifle shot. As I say, first day um, had brass issues. We had ammunition issues. Um, the trigger was terrible, blah, 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 blah. Every, everything was going bad. So, and, and that was all over the shop, right? I didn't want to go and buy any more of that factory ammo, that cheap PPU stuff, and I certainly didn't want to go and pay 50 bucks for a pack of a 30-30 ammo. That's, that's just ridiculous. So, loaded up some hand loads, and we sided in with, we had a, a quick side in with it, and a muck around with it, and I was happy with it. So, um, our first load, we're, we're using uh, these, these uh, Spear 150 grain, uh, they call it 150 grain soft point flat noses. They look like that. I don't know if you can see that. see that little standard sort of 30 30 type type flat face thing because you can't have a obviously you can't have a spiky face to a spiky pointed bullet on these things and everything we're pushing here today is with adi 2209 powder okay so all right here we go we uh we had a bit of a side in with that with that load but we'll come back to that and this is our first this is 32 and a half grains of powder now this day we shot was the uh, same day I shot the 308 the other way. Absolutely howling, howling wind from from front right to back left, sort of across. It was, oh, it was terrible, absolutely terrible. It was windy, it was dusty, and everything could possibly go wrong. But play the cards you dealt. As I, as I said in the other video, if I didn't have a hunting trip coming up, I would have jacked it in and gone home. But that's the way it's gone. So we've shot that with our first three shot group. 
and that's two two and a quarter inches 2.25 those two there were 0.89 of an inch so a little bit of potential there yeah yes and no maybe but as i said you're getting dust in your eyes and 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 yeah the tail's wobbling around everywhere so you, you you take it as you get it this second lot with the 33 grains whatever i did wrong with the die there i set the i set the um i set the projector off way too deep so i had that one shot and i marked that i put black lines or something around the around the brass and um just shot him off then i shot the three same point of aim point of aim is always the center same point of aim that's just that's the group that that shot so that was 0.82 of an inch right and uh those two there, 0.27. So that's not bad. That's not bad. I could, I could live with that quite easily. Now we went up, that's 33 grains of 2 to 6 H. Went up to 33 and a half. Yeah, that's, that's garbage. 3.66 inches. Yeah, crap. Oh, those two, 0.98. There yeah, might be a bit of potential there. And uh, went up to 34 grains, which is the maximum recommended load by ADI for... Uh, this sort of cartridge that's a little group there not too bad not too bad 1.81 but those two there are 0.57 so there's a little bit of potential there again i could live with that okay so not not too bad so we'll we'll change this card over and we'll get this uh, we'll get this other one up right we're back with the second card up um again we're using the uh adi 206 h powder and uh, everything we've shot in here, like with this rifle, they're 50 yards. No point shooting them in 100 yards, you're not shooting big shots. Everything with these things, or most things rather, are gonna be close quarter shots. Like bet between 50, 40, 50, 70 yards, that's it. That's it, they're all scrub guns and all that sort of thing. So this time we are using the uh, uh, Hornady FTX 160 grainers. Little, uh, little red tip beasts. They're, not, they're a nice projectile. They load really, really well. And uh, they featured in Levolution Ammunition. I don't know too much about Levolution Ammunition, except that it's really dear. So, I don't know what it does, but anyway, we'll have a look at these cards now. Right, um, again, as I said before, Dave, windy as hell, windy as hell. So, this is our first three. Absolutely no joy there. What's that, 3.52 inches? Those two are one, one and a bit, yeah, don't even worry about that. Um, 29 grains showed a bit of potential. Boom, boom. But then that happened. Now that's a big chance in that windy, shitty day. Big chance that's me. So, as it, as it landed, 3.22 inches. But that, 0.47. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Now, uh, shooting this through the scope, I thought this one was going really well. Until I went out and had a look at it, I thought they were all going in there. No, they were down here. So one, two, three, that's, that's, there'd be a bit of being in that, but that just could be garbage. So what did that finish up at? 3.42 inches, so no joy there at all. Now this is uh, one, this is with 30 grains of 2 to 06. That's the maximum recommended load uh, of, uh, according to the ADI handbook. 1.3 inches, not too bad. But those two there, those two there are 0.43. So there's potential there. So I've loaded some of them up and I'm going to try and shoot with them and see how they go. So I've, uh, I've come into a heap of these, so I'm, try, I'm going to try as, as hard as I can to make them shoot. Um, I, do think, I do think like a lot of these uh, rifles you get today, I think uh, you'll put a few shots through these things and once the barrel's fouled up and scratched up a bit, then it'll, it'll more than likely dial itself in. But being a scrub gun, that's fine. That's fine. You, you, you're going to be shooting at big things like pigs and, and all that sort of thing at fairly close range. If you can hit that red square, if you're probably hitting that black square, you're pretty right. If you can put five in that black square, you're pretty right because that's, 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 that'll kill any pig. That's, they call that minute of pig or minute of dead. So that's, you can live with that. You can live with that. So I'm going I'm to uh, load up with those and see if I can tighten them up. So I've loaded some. I've loaded some up, and we'll do one more final instalment to see how how it all goes, and hopefully that's in the next couple of days once this lockdown finishes. See ya. 
Right, this is what we, we, we took out with. It took out with and just to recap on the way the, uh, the thing's actually shot. And we had a few of these 150 grain spear uh, soft point flat noses. We've loaded them up with 2206, uh, ADI 2206H powder. And that was the one that shot the best out of those. And I had about, I got 40 of them left. So I'll load up with those. So yeah, that was, that was an original one where I seeded the bullet way too, way too deep. And that was a group I shot in howling wind. So I thought that'll do. They're little, on these little hornady, uh, little splatterburst targets, whatever you want to call them, uh, they're little half inch squares. That So I, I measured that was going to be about 22 clicks up and about four clicks to the right. I finished up about 16 or 17 up to get it to around there. And we, we did that out there. We took a little target out there and we, we, we shot it in. It was a bit, bit uh, windy on the first day we shot it in. Shot it in at about 50 yards, just sort of hanging out the car on the on the door. Is, and that's how we finished up shooting it. And uh, it shot all right like that. So that's that's where we started with the uh, that's where we started with the rifle, and it shot well. It shot reliably. It, everything went well with it. So there's absolutely no issues whatsoever. So um, now I've got the uh, 160 grain FTXs. Uh, I had a couple of shots with those, and their point of impact was a little bit different. So if these were shooting about there, they were shooting about there. So that that so you would expect a heavier projectile. Projectile to be a little bit lower. That's that's the way it goes. But that that's easy to fix. That, that's an easy fix. So that's that's down the track when these uh, soft point flat noses run out. And uh, next trip, perhaps who knows? See how we go. So there we go. We'll wrap it up. Righty yeah. The uh, final wrap on the Marlin uh, 336 in 3030 Winchester. Um, in short, like it. Very easy rifle to handle. Um, heavy, but not too heavy. Um, well constructed, well made. It's it's it, when you pull the internals of these things out, they, they all they're all very well made. There's nothing flimsy about them. Um, the uh, the fit and finish is quite good. Like some people have got uh, issues here and there with the, the fit and finish of these things. This one's quite good. You know, there's nothing in there that'll cause me any uh, any angst. Um, and the thing shoots well. It shoots reliably. It shoots straight. And any missing is me. So. The, the, the scope the scope we've used, we've selected for it uh, does the job admirably so you have to go and spend big uh, big money on it and I can see myself having a lot of fun with this uh, with this rifle uh, uh, for years to come so if, if this is the sort of thing you're after like these lever action scrub guns highly recommend this highly recommend it. I, I, again it's down the bottom of the uh, bottom of the price scale uh, the price but that's that's near the handle there to me you know I'll Again, I've had this argument for a thousand years about these mega dollar guns are supposed to be so much better, and it's, it's just not true. It is just not true. I mean, they've got everybody believing you've got to go and spend, you know, similar money to a, to a half decent car on your rifle, on your scope to get results, and it, it's just, just, I've proven it. Everybody who does it pretty time and time again, it is just not true. It's claptrap, and just, you don't come into it. So. There we go, that's my little rant for the afternoon. So, I'll, uh, I'll sign this one off. Um, good gun, go and grab yourself one. And uh, the cleavers are still doing pretty good deals on them. They've still got a heap in stock, well, if you're ever allowed out of your house, that is, of course. So, um, yeah, if, uh, if, if, if I was buying one, I'd buy another one of these for sure. So, that's it from me this time around. So, until, uh, until next time, if we're ever unlocked again, we might be able to get out and do things in the world. But, uh, tell your wife, and tell your girlfriend. You can tell them both. As long as you're not locked up with them. Just go two clicks up. Ta-da.